Hey guys, what's up? My name is Thomas Spark. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about browser fingerprinting. How can you prevent it? What is it exactly? And yeah, let's get into it. So guys, in terms of this video and how to protect against browser fingerprinting, which browser to use and stuff like that, I'm going to be using Brave in this video and Brave has a lot of cool features we're going to be taking advantage of to prevent browser fingerprinting itself. If you want to help support the channel, go ahead and use brave.com slash tom352. So guys, one of the most important things to think about in terms of privacy is using a VPN. VPNs are a great way to give you more privacy by hiding your IP while you're torrenting, hiding your IP from your websites, giving your ISP not as much information about you since you're encrypting your internet. It's a good way to hide your traffic from your ISP. And there are also other things as well, like giving you a little bit more security um, overall. However, there are other ways to track you online, like with browser pr fingerprinting, for example. Now, what exactly is browser fingerprinting? Well, browser fingerprinting is a method that websites use to track visitors across the web by assigning a unique identifier to them or a fingerprint. Now, a browser fingerprint contains a lot of data that can be matched to the browser characteristics of known people. It also allows websites to link online behavior patterns to specific users. It's sort of uh, similar actually to how police analyze fingerprints, hence the name. So essentially what police do is they analyze the fingerprints and assign or match those fingerprints to an online database to find the criminal. Except in this case with browser fingerprinting, you're not a criminal and you haven't really done anything wrong. You're just pretty much the product of a massive amount of data mining that takes place on pretty much every website out there. So there are people who make the misconception to thinking that if your IP is hidden with something like a VPN, that there is no way to track you or that um, it protects you against browser fingerprinting, which isn't really true. So browser fingerprinting does collect IP addresses, but the main kind of methodology of browser fingerprinting itself doesn't really even need your IP address to keep tabs on you in the first place. According to the Electronic Frontier Foundation, there are also many several other ways that you can be fingerprinted. Stuff like your browsing history, your plugins, plugin versions, system fonts, whether or not you have cookies enabled, super cookies, screen resolution and color depth, the amount of screen you have open or the size of the window, the user agent, which is basically a string of data revealing the browser and operating system versions, as well as even the time zone of your browser and current session. So browser fingerprinting is so exact that there's really not much of a chance at all that you'll have the exact fingerprint as someone else using a browser and doing similar stuff. So how does browser fingerprinting itself work? Well, it basically works by your browser sharing data with a web server when you connect to a website. Because websites can't assign that data to a specific person, they'll do it by assigning you a unique browser fingerprinting code. Now this code will help the website recognize you and associate specific browsing behavior and preferences to you. So there are a lot of different ways that browser fingerprinting is collected, the data itself, stuff like server-side logging, website access logs, which includes stuff like um, your IP address, browser headers, cookies, and even your browser's capability to render graphic content. So why is browser fingerprinting used really at all if it's so invasive and kind of dangerous? Well, it's mostly to give you the right version of a website on your device, so let's say you visit a website on your mobile phone or something like that. It's going to give you like a responsive designed website for your device. So it's pleasing to um, use and operate, which isn't the worst thing. However, the more nefarious reason that fingerprinting is used is for advertising purposes and stuff like data mining. So websites can make money and serve you targeted ads. So besides not only focusing on IP addresses by getting all this other information, advertisers can make much more targeted and personalized profiles. So let's say that you're visiting a website and you render some HTML5 canvas element and the website somehow detects that you're using your graphics card and your graphics driver. They could see that it's outdate, so they could serve you a target of ads suggesting you to buy a new NVIDIA graphics card or something like that. That is one example of how fingerprinting can lead to targeted advertisements and that's pretty crazy when you think about it. There are also other use cases for browser fingerprinting, like websites being able to detect fraud and botnets, and even for ways like spy agencies to detect who people are, even if they're hiding their IP address. So guys, now that we know how fingerprinting is used, how it works and collects information about you, as well as how dangerous it can be, 
what can you do to prevent it? Well, there are a couple different methods. Some are more annoying than others. For me, my use case is mostly, I don't wanna have a ton of extensions that could be breaking websites. But a lot of these extensions, um, especially if you're using a lot of them, they can actually fingerprint you even more. So usually you usually only wanna be using one plugin, but even a lot of these plugins like I recommended in the past, like Canvas Blocker, it can cause incompatibility and just a lesser browsing experience overall. So for the purposes of this video, we're gonna keep it simple and just do what I would recommend. Anyways, guys, what you're gonna to wanna to do is use Brave because it's set to default to allow you to block fingerprinting and it has a lot of good other elements like anti-tracking and stuff like that with shields and everything you could find. Or basically you're gonna to go to the settings um, which you can find in the top right kind of bookmark or setting configuration. Go to settings, then shields. And now we're gonna go down to fingerprint blocking. So you have the option here to do strict, standard, or disabled. Strict is gonna probably block more elements, but probably cause more compatibility and more breakage on websites. Standard is gonna be more of a blend between usability, but also saving you privacy. It's kinda of up to you, depending on which one you wanna do. Not only that, but if you wanna block even more fingerprinting, you could completely disable cookies. And there are also ways to, um, JavaScript is one example of fingerprinting, but Brave doesn't have it enabled, so you don't really have to worry about that, fortunately. The cool thing about Brave is that it actually has a complete kind of informational guide about how it deals with browser fingerprinting. So apparently Brave uses two different ways of blocking and removing or modifying APIs to Brave instances to look as similar as possible. And it also randomizes values from APIs to prevent cross-session and site linking making Brave browser instances look different to websites each time. Anyways guys, this was just a short and quick video about browser fingerprinting. If you're using a VPN, it does give you some level of anonymity and privacy, but there are other ways to track you down like browser fingerprinting. Using a browser like Brave in conjunction with a VPN is a pretty good start to give you a more anonymity on the internet. It's gonna prevent some websites from tracking you across different things. Anyways guys, hope you learned a thing or two for this video and I'll see you again on the next one very soon.